Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I want to show you how you can determine if your female boa constrictor is gravid. I'm going to go over the different characteristics of gravid females and then I'm going to show you a number of gravid females that have just become gravid in my breeding group so you know exactly what to look for. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. So if you want to learn all about these amazing animals, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future boa videos. Now that I'm about four months into the breeding season from when I first introduced my pairings late last fall, I finally have some animals that are pure gravid, which is great. Um, so I'm going to show you them in a sec. First, I just wanted to say a little bit about the breeding activity up to this point. So the last few months, I've been closely monitoring the animals looking for a post-ovulation shed. So the post-ovulation shed is really important to note the dates because this is the date that will tell you about when your boa will be giving birth. It's typically about 105 days after the post-ovulation shed, which typically happens about 15 days after ovulation. So the babies are born about 120 days or so after ovulation. And so that's a rough figure. It can be anywhere from about a week before that date to about two weeks after. And I find that my true red tails typically will deliver about a week or two after the date predicted by post ovulation shed POS plus 105 days. So for about the last two months, I've been checking in on my animals pretty much every day, just noting about when they go opaque and when they shed. And the opaque period leading up to the post ovulation shed is usually longer than other shed cycles. They typically will go opaque for about two weeks or so before they have the shed. So that right there will tell you that it's likely to be a post ovulation shed. Sometimes you'll see multiple sheds. You know, sometimes it's not entirely clear which one of them is the post ovulation shed. I've had times where a female has shed. I thought it was the post ovulation shed, but then she sheds again about a month and a half later, and that turns out to be the post ovulation shed. So sometimes I think a female was due a certain date. The date comes and goes. She doesn't give birth. And then I assume that the later shed was the post ovulation shed. And when I check the dates after the breeding season is over, it's almost always around 105 days after that shed. There are some females that don't give me a post ovulation shed and that gets a little confusing. So if an animal really appears pregnant or gravid and hasn't had a post ovulation shed, sometimes I can go by my previous year's breeding records when I'm predicting the breeding, you know, the due date. Even if that particular animal hasn't bred for me before, I can go by records of similar uh, types of animals. And again, the more that you breed year after year, the more you build up records, the more better you get at it and the more valuable those records come. So make sure to keep very explicit breeding records every year so you can learn on them in the next uh, breeding season. Females will also often be a little bit darker in color after the post ovulation shed and this is thought so they'll absorb more heat and they can keep the babies warmer while they're incubating. So that's another thing to look for. So what else do we look for in a gravid female? Well real briefly the first and most obvious is the animal is going to be bigger. It's going to be much wider around especially the posterior half towards the tail. You'll see this really swollen abdomen. You know in some animals it's a lot more obvious than others. So if a female has a lot of babies in there she's going to be bigger. If she only has a few babies she's not going to be quite as big. But just because an animal is big doesn't mean it's a lot of babies. She could also be full of slugs or unfertilized ova. And you know, she'll look just as big and unfortunately those aren't going to be babies. But at least if you see a female that looks big, there's a chance that there could be a lot of babies in there. The second thing to look for is a gravid female will almost always spend most of its time coiled over the hot spot. I'll typically bump the temperature of the hot spot up to about 92 degrees for gravid females just to give them a little bit more warmth. And the gravid females will typically spend most of their time tightly coiled over that hot spot. Not 100% of the time. They'll also cruise to the other side of the cage sometimes, but they'll spend a lot of time at the hot spot. And so the other thing that can tip you off is that when you take the temperature of the female using a temperature gun like this, 
she's going to be maintaining a relatively high temperature compared to the floor temperature. So if your floor temperature is at 89, 90 degrees and you read the temperature of your female and she's at 91 degrees, there's a pretty good chance she's gravid. So a non-gravid boa is usually going to be a, a few degrees cooler than the hot spot, but gravid females, it appears, can actually raise their temperature a little bit. Uh, I know that pythons can use muscular contractions to raise the temperature of the eggs. I'm not aware of any research like this on boas, but my own experience is that a gravid female will typically be about the same temperature or even a degree or two warmer than the, the hot spot. And so this is 100% of the time. You know, sometimes they will leave, go to the other side, come back to the hot spot, they'll be a little cooler. But typically they're maintaining a relatively high temperature compared to the hot spot. A non-gravid snake, the dorsal temperature is usually a few degrees cooler than the hot spot. So reading the temperature of the snake gives you a pretty good idea whether or not she's gravid. Another indicator of a gravid female is the behavior of her mate, the male that you had in there with her. And typically males stop paying attention to the females once the deed is done and she's gravid. And so you'll see the male will be hanging out on the other side of the cage or he's, you know, off in a hiding spot by himself. But, you know, typically if a male is courting a female, he's always going to be on top of her or, you know, in close contact with her. So the fact that you have a male that suddenly is on the other side of the cage pretty much all the time is a really good sign that your female is gravid. And so I want to stress, don't take the males out too soon. You know, I'm only starting to remove males from my pairings now after four months. Um, and that's a very common mistake that people remove the male too soon. But when the male loses interest and you don't see any contact between them for a few weeks and the female's obviously gravid, it's safe to remove the male at that point. One final thing to look for that isn't true 100% of the time is that females will often lose interest in feeding when they're gravid. And so you might offer a rat or mouse and get no response. However, most of my gravid females continue to eat while they're gravid. And typically I feed them about every month or so. And I feed them a slightly smaller than normal rat. So if the female normally gets a large rat, I'll give her a medium rat about once a month. And I do this until about 40 days before the due date predicted by the post ovulation shed. You don't want to feed them too close to the predicted birth date because then you might induce early labor, which could result in the loss of the babies if they're born prematurely. So now I want to show you a few of my gravid females and point out some of these characteristics. Let's start by looking at this pairing of Suriname red tails. I'm fairly confident this female is gravid. So she's probably under her hide box here over the hot spot. Let me just take that away real quick. Yeah, so you can see she's in a pretty classic position for a gravid female, just tightly coiled over the hot spot wanting to conserve that heat. And I don't want her to disturb her too much, but she's really thick towards the tail. You can see how she's much thicker than she would be without being gravid. She's also looking quite a bit darker than she normally does. This female is normally kind of more of a light tannish purplish color. So I'm pretty confident she's gravid. She actually had her shed uh, a couple weeks ago, late March. So this is going to be relatively early for a Suriname. You know, so this would put her birth date uh, sometime in probably mid-July. Typically the Surinams are born in August or September, so we'll just have to see if that holds up. The other reason I'm pretty confident she's gravid, I still have the male in here, but you can see he's just kind of over on the cooler side. He's just, you know, hanging out by himself. He hasn't really been showing much attention to the female any time lately so usually I give them a few weeks just to make sure they're gravid before I take the male out but I'll probably take him out you know another week or two um, since it looks I'm pretty sure she's gravid at this point here's a hog island female I'm pretty sure she's gravid just based on her behavior but interestingly I haven't seen a post ovulation shed so let's take a look at her yeah she's over the hot spot So what's kind of interesting is she's going into a 
shed right now but you know the last about well, month or so she's just been coiled over the hot spot and you know she is looking quite thick towards the tail um, the male I recently separated they haven't the male hasn't shown any interest over the last few weeks and I also know this female bred for me two years ago and the babies were born sometime in mid-July so I would expect she's gravid by now um, Interestingly, sometimes you don't get a post ovulation shed and you just get a shed in mid gestation. So perhaps, you know, she's having a mid gestation shed. Of course, I'm carefully going to note the date of the shed just in case I'm wrong. This will help me predict when her babies might actually be born. I'm going to do a quick temperature reading on this animal. So looks like she's about 90, 89, 90 degrees. Hot spots about 85 there. It's about 87, 87. Yeah, so you can see she's about a degree or two. That ah, hot spot's 90 there. So she's right, at, you know, about a degree or two above the temperature of the hot spot. You can see the hot spot varies, and her temperature varies as well. But since she's breeding about the same as the hot spot or a little higher, that's definitely a positive sign that she's gravid. Here's another animal I'm almost positive is gravid. This is a Pearl Island female. You know, she's actually out kind of moving around a bit now. And looking at her sides, you can see the white markings between the scales. Her abdomen is kind of so stretched that she's showing these white markings. So definitely a positive sign. She's just really swollen. And this particular female bred uh, the first time two years ago. She actually gave birth, she was, I think, the first litter that year at the end of June, and she had her post-ovulation shed uh, back in March. So pretty sure that this female will be one of my first uh, births of 2021, you know, fingers crossed, but uh, definitely looking swollen and gravid. Finally, here's the pairing. I'm not entirely sure that she's gravid yet, but uh, it looks like it's possible, but I'm continuing to keep them together. This is a Pacalpa Peruvian true red tail. Uh, you can see the male and female are pretty close together now. Uh, they've been pretty close for the, about the last you know three months or so since I introduced them. The female is starting to look really big around, so the female is the lighter colored one here. The male is the darker one. Um, but I have still seen interest of the male. I saw their tails were intertwined just last night. So I'm going to keep them together. She did have a shed um, about a week and a half or so ago. Uh, typically with Peru red tails, I would expect them to be born in September or even October. So that shed seems a little early for a Peru red tail. So I'm not quite sure she had her post ovulation shed. So I'll keep them together. Let's just do a quick temp. So she's looking well, about 86 degrees, 87. Uh, the hot spots are on 89, 90. So give them a few more weeks. You know, it never hurts to leave the male in a little longer just to be sure. You just don't want to take them out too soon. That's probably the number one reason why people aren't successful breeding boas. So that's what you should keep in mind when you're trying to determine if your female boa constrictor is gravid. I hope this video was helpful and you can confirm that your females are gravid. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line via social media. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.